Hi everyone, I am so glad that you made it to today's episode. We are looking at our uh, Chasing the Dream series. We're looking at operations and we're going to be discussing trucking schools today. Some of the topics we're going to address is paying your own way, scholarships, Pell Grants, and company schools. Again, this series is offered for free from DOT FMCSA Compliance Specialist. We're located in Fresno, California. My name is Linda Jenkins. Our office number is 559-319-8464. If you'd like to, DM, to email us, our email address is DOT FMCSA Compliance Specialist at gmail.com. Also, I'd like to offer for you to join our email list for free updates and be the first to know when our new courses release. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Again, today's lesson is on trucking schools. And we are going to be looking at first paying your own way. Then we're going to look at scholarships and Pell Grants as well as unemployment and then also company schools and what to expect. So for trucking schools, uh, basically uh, commercial driving schools 101. <laughs> um, you need to know, uh, you know, are you going to invest in yourself? And if you're going to pay for the schooling yourself, if you are, there are things that you need to know. First off, if you invest in yourself, where you go out and you find your own school, the normal cost range that I've been able to find out on the web is anywhere from $2,500 to $7,000. Uh, that's probably around typical. Uh, the high end being more the company paid type schooling. The lower end is where you take care of your own housing and such like that. Uh, I do know of a couple places here in California that are even less than that. So um, that's something that if you're interested in finding more about, just let me know and I can give you the names of those schools. One of the things that I keep hearing consistently from a lot of my lady drivers that are going to school, this is a man dominated industry. And so many times when we have our schools, because there's not so many schools that are specifically for women, I may, I, I know of one, but because men are dominating these schools, they tend to bully the women into thinking that they are able to go on ahead and get behind that wheel in three weeks. Well, you know, it's very daunting, very overwhelming when you have to climb up into that big rig the very first time. And so for women, we, at least in my opinion, okay, I'm not trying to sell anyone short here, but for women generally, you have to look at it like you have to build up that confidence. That's a big piece of machinery that we are not used to playing around in most instances. Yes, there are tomboys. I even considered when I was growing up myself a tom tomboy. I grew up on the farm, but I never drove an 18-wheeler until I grew up <laughs> and moved away from home and, and got into the industry on my own, you know. So just don't be bullied into accepting something less than what you're paying for. If you're paying for a CDLA, that school has a responsibility to put you through those classes. If you're paying for those classes yourself, then they have no right to make you take a class B. You stick with it. Don't let them bully you out of your class A. And that's what happens a lot of times. If you're having a problem with that, or if you feel like you've been, uh, you know, uh, harassed by them to hurry up and finish with your education, 
report them to the Better Business Bureau. They have no right to do that. You have a right to get what you pay for. So don't accept less than what you want. If you want a class B, that's your choice. But don't let them be the ones that determine where you're gonna go with your education. The next thing is make sure if you're paying for this, especially if you're paying for it on your own, that they have job placement opportunities available to you. And it's more than, you know, and I'm not gonna, <laughs> the main, the main carriers that are out there. And if you've been in the trucking industry long enough, you know which ones I'm talking about, where they also offer you their schooling, but it's at a big balloon rate, and then they take payments out. Don't, don't do that if you don't have to. Not when you can go to a private school yourself. Just stick with it, okay? Now, if you are looking into trucking schools, first off, believe in your dream. This is what you want to do. You want to provide for yourself, your family, for whatever reason, you know, whether you're married or separated, divorced, single, it doesn't matter. For whatever reason, you've decided that this is the industry you want and you can do it. When I first started out driving, there were hardly any women in our industry and there were no way to find out the information like what I'm providing you and these other websites for ladies groups are providing you. Those did not exist when I started driving. So I'm trying to help the new driver and the new owner operator get their feet wet and get in, you know, into this very male dominated industry. We can do it as women working together. Now, something that you probably didn't know in a lot of these schools that are commercially driven, do not let you know about because they want all the money that they can get, is you can qualify for scholarships, Pell Grants, and post-secondary schools, okay? How, how can you uh, improve your ability to maybe get a scholarship or a Pell Grant. You see that FAFSA, that's a free application for federal student aid. Those are typically filed in January. Doesn't always have to be that way. My sister also started driving and when she went to school, I taught her about this. She filed in the middle of the year and because they still had funds available for the trucking industry. I think she went to school like in, um, I don't know, April, May timeframe. So, you know, and she got hers paid for by a Pell Grant. So don't think that you have to get a loan to pay for your schooling. You know, if you're gonna wait until the end of the year, you might as well wait until the beginning of the next year. Go ahead and get your information for that application filed in January so that you can take your courses at the beginning of the year. That way they're paid for. It's free money, take it if you can. Now as for scholarships, each state has their own scholarship association and it's no different than going to a community college. That money is out there. You just have to find the companies that are you know, giving the scholarships. And there are plenty of transportation industry companies that for women especially and for immigrants and for uh, the minorities, they give that money away for free. All you have to do is apply for it. So keep that in mind. Now, if you are going for a Pell Grant, you can get as much as everything paid. If That's how my sister got. If you are going to do a scholarship, Normally, plus or minus, it's gonna be anywhere from $300 to $700. So you'll still be responsible for some of it, but not all of it. And that doesn't matter if you go to a company paid or offered schooling, or if you do this in an independent one that you do on your own. Now, also, um, I've had people ask me about unemployment benefits. Can you attend school while you are on unemployment? The answer is both yes and no. 
the school that you go to would have to probably offer the course at night. That way you can, during the daytime hours, or if they will allow you to start at a later time in the day, um, you know, like for afternoon classes, you can still be available and looking for work while you're going to school. But, you know, please follow the regulations of your state. And just know that when you sign off on that paper, that you have to say that you have been available and looking for work, okay? The best thing that I can tell you is research, research, research. Find the way that you want to go and then find out more information about it. So the next thing that we're going to be looking at are these company paid schools. Now, be careful when you are dealing with a company paid school. These are going to be these mega corps that offer this, oh, you know, we pay you while you're being trained and all of that. Be aware that they're not probably going to pay you more than minimum wage. And anything you make, you most likely, depending on the contract you sign, are going to have to pay that money back. Plus, on top of that, you may be in uh, signing up for a contract with them for one or more years. And remember, they're going to be paying you at a rate that is very, very low. You're not going to start out at a higher rate because basically they control your pay, they control your routes, and they control your equipment. So that gives you three X's right there. <laughs> you know, uh, when you're talking trucks and you're going to be away from home as much as you are, you don't want to start, you know, you know, at what, 40 cents a mile or something like that is what, you know, most beginning companies are starting out with. And one company that I know is a, me a mega carrier, you know, they are starting out even like 30, 38 cents a mile. It's terrible. Right now, you know, with your inexperience, you think that that's a lot, but it's truly not. And then if you're running teams, if you're running teams, you might be just getting 26 cents a mile. So please remember, you know, they control every aspect of your life. You're signing your life away if you're going to a trucking school from a big mega company. You need to make sure that if you decide to go that route, that you are well informed about the contract that they're going to be giving you and making sure that that equipment that you're going to be running isn't going to be broke down. Because simply because your uh, equipment is broke down doesn't mean that they're going to stop those payments. You're still going to have to make those payments if you're not making the money. So how will you live? If they're controlling everything, you just signed yourself into servitude, basically speaking. And I don't advise trucking schools from a big company, but that's my opinion. Other people have went through it. Other people have had very nice situations with it. But myself in general, everybody that I know of that went that route, at, you know, at first it sounded really good. But within four or five months of them signing that contract, they were like, how do I get out of this, you know? And, but once you sign the contract, you're in a legal binding contract, you know, unless it's a walk away. And you're still going to be responsible for that uh, schooling, and they're going to balloon payment that out. In other words, they're going to force you to pay a whole lot more than what you were anticipating simply because you didn't hold up your end of the contract. So be very, very careful with that free training language, you know, Avoid the sparklies is what they like to give you like, oh, yeah, we got this brand new equipment, you know, simply because your truck is new. You better be looking at those trailers out there because that's what you're going to be pulled, pulling in. And that's what you're going to be pulled in and checked on by DOT if you come be, you know, if you're pulled into a way station. Don't just check what equipment you're going to be driving because you might have a 2019 trailer with a, I mean, a truck, you know, with a 2000 year trailer, 
that has rust all over the wheels, that has broken eye beams underneath it. You know, get out there. Don't just sign a contract. Get out there and inspect that trailer just like what you would in a pre-trip. And if the mass majority of the trailers out there look old and used, you better run. Don't stay. Don't sign the contract. Just tell them, no, this isn't for me, <laughs> you know, and go on ahead. Another thing that you can do is when you're going down the road, don't just notice the trucks. And I'm talking about in your regular vehicle, in your car, before you even start your courses. Look at those trailers. Look at the back. Look at the DOT bumper. See what kind, generically speaking, what kind of equipment are they truly running? What they tell you over the phone and what you see out there on the road may be two totally different things. You got to remember those recruiters, all they're trying to do is make numbers. And when you're talking to a recruiter, basically you are just a number and you're going to be a greenhorn number. So they're going to take advantage of you. And I'm not being negative. I'm just trying to warn you. Okay. Look at the equipment. Look at the tires. Go to a truck stop. If you're interested in going and looking at one of those mega companies and you're like, oh, you know, their trucks are awesome. Go to a truck stop. Look at their trailers. Look under their trailers. Because that's where you're going to find out how they're going to treat you. Because if they treat those trailers bad, they're going to treat you bad. And you better know it. Because when you get behind that wheel and you have a contract on your back, you are in servitude to that company if you've signed a contract because of school. Just don't be blinded by the sparkle because that's what they're good at selling is the sparkle. So ladies, again, one of the things and, and for you gentlemen as well, seek expert advice before you sign a contract. You know, the compliance stuff and the safety regulations, you know, it, once you go to work for your company, that's going to be covered by the company because most likely straight out of school, you're not going to be opening your own business. However, if you are wondering about your career path and how you need to go, seek the advice of, a, of an expert, whether it's with our company or another company, I don't care. Find somebody that either works for the company that you want to work for and don't just take one person's name for it. And the reason why I say that is because these mega companies have gotten smart. What they do is they offer the current drivers that are there a bonus, a sign on bonus, anybody that they can bring on for anywhere from a thousand to twenty five hundred dollars. You think they ain't going to try to look at that money and say, hey, you know, if you'll come to work after six months, I'll get a $2,500 bonus. Do you think they're going to really always tell you the truth? It's a money game and you need to learn it early. Okay. So find an expert, people who have been out on the road, independent drivers that can tell you, you know, not just horror stories, but good stories. I worked for a mega company before I started my own company. And the mega company that I worked for was awesome. You know, if it hadn't have been for them, I would have never been able to open my own companies. And I say companies, not just company, because I have the transport business. And then also I have this DOT FMCSA compliance specialist. So they taught me a lot, but I did not attend my, my schooling from them. I paid for mine independently, and that is especially what I'm trying to convince you of the necessity to do it. So trucking schools. Now, this doesn't matter if you are going to a commercial truck driving school, you know, from one of the big mega companies, or if you're paying for it independently. This information on this slide is generic for both sides of the house, but it's good information. Now, in my opinion, for somebody who is green that has never been behind the wheel of an 18 wheeler, you're still learning your double clutching, you're still learning your backing and all of that stuff. You still have to learn how to do the pre-trip and feel comfortable and all of that and your post-trip and your ELDs. Because there is so much that you need to learn, it doesn't matter if you're paying for your school out of pocket or whether you're paying through a, a, a company contract. In my opinion, 
you really need six weeks minimum for a new driver, somebody that's never been behind the wheel before. Now, a lot of these trucking schools, they are trying to get students in and they are competing against the big guys. So they'll say stuff like, oh, you know, in three to six weeks, you could have your, your you know, your CDLA. Well, you know, you might have your CDLA. That doesn't mean you have the experience to be behind that wheel yet, not by yourself, okay? Um, the, the requirements for a typical trucking school, and like I said, it doesn't matter if you're a mega carrier or if you're, you know, an individual carrier, is that you, put, you must pass the Department of Transportation physical. You have to have a Class A driver's license, uh, instructional permit, and pass the required drug screen. For you to be able to cross state lines, you're going to have to be in most states 21. Uh, if you're going to travel in the state that you reside in, uh, they will let you in at 18. Those laws are changing though, um, as long, if you work for a mega carrier, which really makes our roads less safe. And for me, safety is the biggest issue, okay? The curriculum will include, but is not limited to the following, 50 hours of classroom instruction, 15 hours of laboratory and park vehicle inspection, that's your pre and your post trip inspections, uh, 24 hours of driving range, basic vehicle handling, in other words, that's driving inside of the yard, and 71 hours of public roadway driving while with a qualified driver instructor. Okay, so that's, that's how it's going to be split up. Usually that first week is, you know, just going in the first, first gear, second gear, third gear around the, the lot. And it doesn't matter if you're, you know, at a commercial driving school or if you're at, you know, one that you're, you're paying out of pocket for. So just know that those are the typical, um, you know, that's the typical requirements in the curriculum for what you're going to be looking at at your school, okay? Now, the next thing we're talking about here is talking about the trucking schools. Whether you are going to be an independent graduate from your own trucking school that you paid for out of pocket, or whether you're going to a company paid school, you know, first off, know your contract, regardless, you know, if you're going to sign on with, uh, with your own company, or if you're going to sign a contract and go to their school. But please do not make the, the mistake that so many new hires and new students uh, fall for. You know, they think that they're going to go to school and they're going to learn everything. And that's just not it. The responsibility of that school, doesn't matter what kind it is of, of the two types of trucking schools. Their job is to teach you to pass that CDL exam. And that's it. No more, no less. Now, if you gain more of that, then so be it. That's good. But in three to six weeks, you're not going to have the knowledge that somebody that's been out there for 18 months, somebody that's been out there for years knows. You're not going to get that until you actually get behind the wheel with your trainer from the company that you hire on to. That experience is expected to be uh, gained over the road and usually between the first six and 12 months with your employer. It just depends on how their insurance is set up as to how soon you can get your own truck. So in most instances, you know, unless you have previous experience, I would say, you know, from reputable companies for the first six months, you can expect once you hire on that you're going to be driving teams. Now, whether that's with another lady or with a man, you know, or with a smoker, a non-smoker, all of that is what you have to work out with their HR department. 
That's nothing that I can tell you, yeah, you're gonna get this kind of driver with you or whatever. But their goal as a company at that point, whoever you sign on to, is to get you trained so that eventually you can get out there and have your own truck unless you want to run teams and you have a partner that you're teaming up with. So just keep that guy and that in mind. The more time that you spend as a tra uh, trainee, you know, that six to 12 months once you, uh, you know, once you actually get on the road, you know, you're not gonna get as good as pay. But, you know, what I would advise is every time you can do a back, do it. Every time that, you know, you can uh, practice in an empty parking lot, do it. You know, every time that you can go inside and stand on the dock and talk to the dock workers about how to park that truck, what to aim for, how to best get it put into that hole the best way for their particular dock and notice how it lays out, the better for you. That's more experience in your pocket and the faster you're gonna be able to move along. The more you stay with your butt in the back or your butt in that seat, once you get to a shipper or receiver location, the less experience you're gonna have, unless you are practicing on your own. You should have a program that is uh, given by your company that, to, and that says, you know, within a six week or a six month period, you're gonna have to have these many backs done, this type back done, that type back done. You're gonna have to be able to drive in this kind of weather, that kind of weather. I mean, there's a lot, there's a long list. It's like 150 items the last time I saw it of different things that you're gonna to have to be able to do as a new driver before they'll issue your own truck. So be aware of that because all of that's gonna make a difference for you. Just remember, you know, when you're at your trucking school and they're going through everything, you're gonna be doing your pre-trips, you're gonna be learning how to get into a, a dock, you're gonna be having that classroom time, uh, where they're teaching you the ELDs. When you're on the road, they're gonna be teaching you how to keep from having distracted driving, like that lady on the CB, CB there. Uh, then also, if you're down there by the Dallas area, um, actually, I think this is, this is over in Arkansas. Um, you know, you can see all of those 35 East, 35 North, West. Uh, no, that's gonna be down in Dallas because that's 35 East North. <laughs> So, um, you know, how to drive in construction, how to do your backing, all of that stuff is stuff that you're gonna have in your school. Uh, once you are out, okay, start as quickly as you can with your new employer because the faster you can get on the road, the faster you're gonna get into your own truck. The faster you get into your own truck is the faster that you're gonna be responsible for making your own money and not depending on somebody else. Because I will tell you, a, a trainer in your truck with you, they're going to first off be making more money than you. And then the next thing is for every mile you pull, they get paid for that. So, of course, they're going to keep you behind that wheel. But, you know, would you rather be behind that wheel, you know, making 38 cents a mile or 42 cents a mile underneath your own truck? You know, it's totally up to you. So I would say once you can, you know, do everything that you possibly can to get that those skills down and get them down pat so that you can be making the money that's gonna bring you, you know, thousands of dollars home in any given week. But, you know, that's gonna come on down the line. That's gonna come down, you know, to your experience once you get there. So to review everything that we've discussed today, um, recall that you know we've re we've looked at our self-paid schools versus our company-paid schools. We also addressed Pell grants, scholarships, and secondary schooling. Um, please remember to avoid the shiny if you're going to go with a company-paid school. Know your equipment, and that doesn't just mean your truck. Look at those trailers, inspect them. You know, whether it's while you're traveling down the road in your car or whether you get permission to look uh, at the trailers at a truck stop. 
you know, just be careful when you approach a driver on that so that they know what you're doing before you actually go out there looking at their trailers. Lastly, talk to an expert and don't let the expert always be from the company that you're wanting to drive for. Find other people that you can talk to about that company and see what they have to say about it. If most of the stuff that you hear is positive, then you know most likely it's going to be a good company. And there are great companies out there, but just be careful. Don't avoid, don't fall for all the shiny, and talk to an expert. And the next thing is, is after you get out of your school, practice, practice, practice. Don't stop practicing, even if you've driven for 15 years. Take time to improve your driving ability to improve your backing ability. This is a constant improvement process, guys. You can't expect to just get out there the first time and be an expert. It just doesn't work that way. The, there's always something different every day. Every day is a new challenge. And, you know, just be excited about it. Trucking is fun. You know, there's never a dull moment you know, and every day you get to see a new sunrise and a new sunset, and every state is different that you travel through, and, you know, have fun with it. Just don't get caught up and marred down by these schooling systems that can, you know, take the fun out of it, you know, by putting you into debt, especially when you don't need it. If you can get a Pell Grant, you can get it paid at 100%. You just got to get your paperwork in there early enough. So, you know, I wish everybody well, and I want everybody to succeed at it, you know, and find you a great school and some great instructors, okay? So, you know, in, in closing, I just want to say thank you for attending our operations tra and trucking schools training today. We are DOT FMCSA compliance specialists. We're located in Fresno, California. Again, if you want more information concerning those schools that are less than $2,500, please give me uh, a direct message or an email. Uh, but remember, you're going to get what you paid for, so just keep that in mind. My telephone number at the office is 559 319-8464. The email address is DOT FMCSA Compliance Specialist at gmail.com. If you want to follow us on YouTube, it's DOT FMCSA Compliance Specialist. Okay. No S at the end of that, guys. Um, and then also we're on Twitter and others other uh, main platforms as well. So um Anyway, I just wanted to help you guys out. Uh, if there's anything that I can do, just give me a call. Please remember to like, share, and uh, uh, comment below if you need any any help, you know, that I can help provide you. Uh, please subscribe to our email list. Just drop me a line below that says that you want to be added to our subscription list uh, so that you can know when our new course is released. So again, I want to thank you for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe for free uh, to the DOT FMCSA Compliance Specialist Group, and that way we can go ahead and let you know when we are releasing our new videos. You'll be the first ones to know. I want to congratulate you on your decision to go into the trucking industry. It's been wonderful for me and for my family, and I hope that you have the same experience that I have had. Um, I've, I've loved it. You know, it's been a career that I've never regretted getting into. So uh, again, our number is 559-319-8464, and our email is dotfmcsacompliancespecialist at gmail.com. Again, thank you guys. My name is Linda Jenkins. Y'all stay safe out there and just keep it between the ditches, okay? Uh, Y'all have a wonderful day and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you.